to get the slowed vehicles, and that is one of our other concerns with that. Ruth, with the, with the pre-existing uh, curb cuts there, what's, is it the footprint that's triggering this because he's changing the footprint of the building? Otherwise, he'd be grandfathered in with both of these, wouldn't he? Anytime you, that you are dealing with looking at a new site plan, you as the Planning Commission have the authority and actually the responsibility under Tennessee Code annotated in looking at the life, safety, health, that kind of, I can't remember the exact terminology. And so that's why you're looking at this. And that's why the staff is deferring to you. Um, we are recommending that that entrance be removed, but it is really a Planning Commission decision at this point. Will it not have to go to the Board of Mayor Alderman for the minimum separation? Like the whatever the 400 feet rule mm -hmm. or okay, mm -hmm. is it that's because it's a pre-existing site? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're evaluating this and according to your what your authority is under the site plan requirements. Okay. Where is the uh, deceleration lane? The deceleration lane. Here is the striping right there. This is what they are taking out some of that existing island through there to make it of adequate width. Um, it's too close to pretty good long deceleration lane. Well, it's too, it's too close through here because when you look at this drawing here, you can see that how close these are. So you can't put a deceleration lane here because then it becomes an acceleration lane. And if you recall at the corner of where the Ingalls is, where you come out of Farragut Crossing, we actually had to eliminate that acceleration lane because people tend to think that is a merge lane and there isn't adequate room and then you create conflicts with these two entrances by, by doing that. So they cannot put a, a deceleration lane in here there's not adequate room to put a deceleration lane in here. So where the deceleration lane is actually right in here, it, the taper starts about right here, but it's actually is not a full deceleration lane till about right there. Um, based on there, you can kind of see that striping. And then because this island will be there's not adequate room on this island and that's why or on this island and that's why it is being shaved down to provide for a decel a turn lane really to go into the entrance right there uh, speaking as one who went to the caliber car wash frequently I can tell you I never had a problem with two entry exits there and I'm not sure I know what the big deal is I don't know look at Weigel's is that a big deal <laughs> I mean that's one of those things where it wasn't a big deal when it was being discussed and I certainly hope for Jim's sake he is much more successful than his predecessor <laughs> Mr. Rooney um, you all know the North City one as well there I do is that a one way in such as we're diagramming here uh, no, you can turn around behind it. And if you if you get back in there and you decide you don't you want to turn around, you've got room to turn around and come back out. Yeah, that road goes both ways going back there. That road that we <laughs> we developed in Lenore City was developed for the uh, was provided for the entire development there. So there's plenty of options for vehicles to change the mine and, and get out of queue. Well, I, I agree with the mayor. Um, I, I do know where Ruth is coming from, and, and there certainly is a certain amount of risk. But I agree with the mayor. It, you know, it's it's had uh, it's had a similar traffic flow before. Never was a problem. Um, I I certainly wouldn't have any any issue with proceeding with both those uh, openings off of Kingston Pike. How close to? The uh, across the street street is it? Ninety feet. Um, from this point here is ninety feet between these entrances. 
So it's just that means it's slightly closer with the Loudon. No questions or comments? Yeah. A comment there. I, I should think, at least I should think that the if we leave that entry there, there ought to be a right in, right out. Left turns are just atrocious anyway, I think, you know. Draw, draw, you, you're getting pretty talented at this. Would you draw a diagram about where that left turn, I, I'm not as concerned about the deceleration lane as I am about that left turn. Like you're going to Sam and Andy's and you're coming out of Sam and Andy's and you're making a left turn and, and one of Jim's customers is making a left turn out of there. Is that what you're wanting me to do? Well, draw? I'm just making sure I'm, I'm seeing it right. And I think you I, use I think I kind of agree with Ed that if you had a ride in, ride out, it still allows Jim's Jim's clients to exit. But it's going to prohibit that that potential head on right there. It's That does solve the you know, the rear end collision is an issue, but that's usually not a life that's a you don't usually see fatalities in that type of, you know, conflict. Um, as some of you have heard Daryl on a occasions, you know, his primary primary issue is always the head-on potential because your your potential for a more severe injury is, is greater on that kind of conflict. And they still have a left turn out at the uh, entrances closer to Blockbuster. Yes, this is a f the one on the is a full as they oh, have that striped. You have the left, the right, and then you know. Okay. Any more questions or comments? I'd like to make a comment. I think I can probably um, relieve the situation a little bit. We we've anticipated challenges with cars turning left out of this property. The last thing we want to do is create accidents. We want to make it as safe as possible. Our goal is to allow vehicles to move forward on a constant basis as opposed to stopping and going backwards. And I think Noah's suggestion um, uh, gives us the relief that we want. And I think that we can likely, very likely live with uh, a right out. We, we, we met with TDOT this week, as Rusty mentioned, and they were very cooperative and open-minded. And we all had conversations about the same issues. And um, I, I feel that this board has similar concerns that we've all had. Some look at the pros, some look at the cons. And, and we want this to be successful both for Farragut and both for our business. So we would, we would propose that we present to you a, a, an alternative drawing that will show a little bit more safety perhaps. We can tighten up that exit and get out with a right out. It'll still allow our commercial vehicles to exit. Perhaps our confused customers can also exit. And Rusty, Rusty has a drawing. I suppose we could submit that to Ruth. So you're saying not just a ride in, ride out, but just a purely a ride out is what, what you're kind of proposing. Yeah, we, we looked at this. The taper, we really don't want anybody entering that, in that uh, entrance. Um, we want them to come to the full, uh, full entrance. We have the, uh, the deceleration lane. We were able to stripe that through um, from the, uh, uh, the other uh, entrance to the east. And... Uh, and, and really mark that clearly so that it, it looks very, you know, very, it looks like it's a closed entrance, um, which it is essentially, but we're allowing for the vehicles to exit. Um, it, it's a little tight to try to get trucks out of that. And uh, so that entrance or that exit is 20 feet wide. It's a little wider than what a typical one way exit would be, but with the extra striping, we feel like it's, um, would be adequate. And then we're showing a little bit of extra concrete 
on the uh, on the western part of that island just so if there are any trucks that get out over that uh they won't tear up all the whatever they'll, landscape they'll drive whatever. Over. Right. like a mountable curb yeah i think yeah. that's a great solution i think that if we use a traditional ride in ride out with basically the triangular island i think jim is going to be constrained when he has a big truck in there if he's a big truck's going to have a tough time navigating 10 or 11 foot drive aisle trying to get through past that triangular concrete island and and the other perimeter but i think what he's proposing here <coughs> i think i know it solves my issues um, I, think, well, I think it helps his internal circulation well, I, I, because it, yeah. because you don't have people trying to kind of cut in at the short and sh if there's a backup and stack up on site you you don't have that trying to conflict of trying to merge well, and there's stack up back on the Kings. Precisely, we're we're not interested in having customers come in uh, in that exit either. Our our primary goal is is fluid vehicle movement in and through the facility and the property, and that that to me that's that's a great win win. It gets people in and gets people out safely. It's all staff's concerns also, you know, because we're really. It kind of looks like he, he's he's getting mo the majority of the I mean the diesel lanes use what about 120 feet you like to have including the taper so it, it, do you, is, can he still get the diesel lane in there um, it's really tight um, but I'll defer to I know that Rusty and Daryl have talked about that Daryl just um, I know Rusty drew the one that's in the plan according to what Daryl had recommended that he do it with the exception of that entrance being there so it, it's it's about as tight as it can be from what I understand well that's yeah. a that's a hundred and fifty foot taper. Um, and then there's a, a hundred foot turn lane, so it's okay. It's, it's that's pretty sufficient. Yeah, it should be adequate. I Ruth. Think no. Oh, excuse no, me. No, go ahead, Betty. Uh, for my clarification, would you draw the traffic pattern of a person normal person going in to get a car wash and detailing and then a, one of these vehicles coming in and how it's going to fit in with the regular traffic pattern and how it will get out when it decides it's not supposed to be there. Well, while Ruth's drawing that, I think it'd probably be fair to say that the majority of your traffic, maybe with the exception of deliveries, is going to take the normal circulation route, and that entrance is probably not going to get used very often. And it w I think with appropriate signage, my concern was just some yahoo just going crazy and just driving around and then trying to exit and make a left but i think you've kind of resolved that and uh i think with some signage you could you could go a long way and try to encourage maybe 90 percent of the folks to follow the instructions thank you i i agree with that i think we've done what we could to keep it safe as well as keep the bottlenecks down and, and prevent people from backing up on kingston pike on post snow days when you when you imagine 1200 1300 vehicles moving through this facility in an eight hour period, uh, they need to be rolling forward and moving on a consistent basis. So this allows that to happen. One thing before Ruth goes into the description on the traffic flow for Betty is just want to point out that there hasn't, there, there will, there is no other car wash like this in the United States of America. We, we're, we actually have gone over to Europe and we've taken some technology and some tricks from, from some folks in the Netherlands and we've, we're bringing some technology and some options to this facility that has not been seen before, and it's going to be a very dynamic and a very busy place. It's going I'm to be looking very forward exciting. to you coming and so is my husband. <laughs> it's uh, Jim. Tell us about this kind of the you got the kind of the the first phase, well, if you call it a phase, which is I guess your your typical wash bay. Then you referred about something if somebody wants to go a little bit further, certainly, and go through the second. It, it, can you? Just more for curiosity, describe sure. what, what activity is going on in that building. Absolutely, and that's what I was um, alluding to. The first phase is relative to the wet tunnel, the car wash tunnel that you might visualize tonight as you're sitting here thinking of one of our car washes. And that's the, that's the standard flow. We go around the property to the right, go to the back, and we, and we enter right there where Ruth's drawing the blue arrow. And that, so we've reversed the flow for those of you that have gone to this facility for the last 25 years. We're going the other direction now.